For more on all of this, let's bring in political analyst Eleanor Cliff. We've got a lot to unpack. I want to get your thoughts <laughs> on the immigration, the rallies. But right. I know you attempted to get to this news conference. Just give us a scene setter because some people described it as bizarre, interesting. And one reporter who was there said it was more entertaining the, than The Apprentice, but more frightening than The Walking Dead. Uh, your thoughts? Oh, that's a good description. Um, first of all, the president announced it. Uh, he was meeting with congressional leaders, and he announced it like at 11 o'clock and said, I think I'm going to have a press conference at 12. Do you think the press will show up? And so then they scrambled you know, to prepare the East Room, and they said, no, it would be 12.30. So a number of reporters, like myself, I got there at 10 of 12, and that was too late to be escorted in. Uh, but it was a, it was a full-court press. I mean, everybody is riveted to this presidency. And frankly, it was called to introduce his new nominee for labor secretary. And so we cynics thought, oh, he'll introduce him. The gentleman's family will be there. They'll take two questions, and that will be it. So first of all, the labor nominee wasn't there. <laughs> and then the president held forth for an hour and 16 minutes. And he started out, uh, he almost got the feeling that he was coming unspooled. Uh, it was a, a, his familiar rant against the press going over, you know, his winning numbers from the election. And he seemed a, a kind of subdued, but he got into it then. He was jousting with reporters and uh, kidding with them and saying, I'm looking for a friendly face. And, uh, you know, I, you got to give the guy credit for being willing to stand up there for that long and take it. But what it says is he has such a need for an audience <laughs> that he uh, will uh, do this on short notice because he felt like it. Well, I, I wanted to just go over uh, a couple of things. I know you've covered a lot of administrations. Yeah. I just want to kind of, he's been in office less than a month. Um, he's tussled with the judiciary, Congress, the news media, not to mention Meryl Streep. Um, <laughs> he's had an abundance of leaks. I mean, they're just, it's leaking like crazy over at the White House. Uh, you had this huge women's march. You had this, uh, this day without immigrants today. And he says his administration is running like a fine-tuned machine. Is there a disconnect there? Uh, there's a disconnect, but he's trying to say it's all the news media and it's the fake news that we uh, perpetrate. And uh, so uh, he may believe that it's running smoothly, but nobody else does. And I think you really have to wonder about his grasp on reality. And I think this... This uh, news conference was also intended as a message to uh, Capitol Hill, where Republican senators are bailing on him because they see this Russian connection. They don't really know where it's going. And uh, I, they, they don't want to be defending somebody who could be the subject of an FBI investigation or could possibly potentially be forced from office. Well, you know what's interesting about that? You've been here long enough to remember right. there's been controversies, there's been uh, scandals here in Washington, Watergate, right. uh, Iran-Contra. Normally, the president comes out and says, rest assured, we're going to get to the bottom of this, uh, reassuring words. Again, on Mike Flynn, that's not what we heard today. No, what we heard today is that uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful gentleman. He served his country well. And, uh, okay, he, he uh, didn't handle some information that he passed along, and so that's why he had to get rid of him. But if he talked to the Russians about the sanctions, that's fine, no problem. The president said he didn't order him to do that, but he sees that as part of his job. And if he didn't do it, he would have ordered him. And so this is, uh, again, it's, it's Alice through the looking glass, uh, the way he interprets these events. But he's got to worry about losing support on, on, on Capitol Hill because uh, that's what's standing between him and uh, a, a, a investigation that could take us places where this president doesn't want us to go. Leon Panetta, who served in the Clinton administration and the Obama administration, said he really needs somebody at the White House who knows how to work within the White House. He doesn't really have anybody like that. And he described what he witnessed today, the world according to Trump, um, kind of the surreal world. What's the message to foreign leaders? What's the message to Congress? Uh, this isn't reassuring, is it? No, the level of dysfunction is not, it's not like anything we've seen. Usually an administration has one of these kind of events a year. <laughs> and we've had three or four in just a space of a couple of weeks. And I think that uh, 
Donald Trump has such confidence in himself that he believes he's the only one who can rescue his administration, which is why he, on very short notice, demanded that he hold this press conference today. I, I think his staff was t entirely unprepared. Uh, he's, he's a one-man show. And he has come from the outside. He has pretended all along, it's so easy, I can fix this, I can fix that. And he starts out saying he's inherited such a mess. He's inherited a pretty fine economy and, and, and a strong country that needs, needs work, yes. But uh, it's not the, the, the dire picture that he tries to create. And he's the one man who can save it. I think he doesn't understand that people are looking at him and wondering if he you know, has a screw loose somewhere. I think that's to put it very bluntly, but I think that is the feeling a lot of people looked at this press conference today askance. Well, we will leave it there. Eleanor Cliff, that's always right. interesting. Uh, thanks so <laughs> much for stopping All by. Right.